You know, normally I go into these videos and my number one thing I say for the keys to victory is run the damn ball. <laughs> Ironically enough, I don't think I have to say that this week. <laughs> run the damn ball is almost to a point now where there's almost a 0% chance that will not happen. They're going to probably run the damn ball every single play, let's be honest. Alright, so we play the Pittsburgh Steelers this week, this upcoming Sunday. And to be honest, it's nice that we're getting 12 days off of rest. It's very nice for that said reason. Problem is, you know, we don't really have our starting quarterback anymore, do we? Joe Burrow is out for the season. And of course, depending on how the situation goes with T. Higgins, obviously Sam Hubbard. Yoshi will find out they will be able to play this upcoming week. Hopefully, we will have some of those guys back to give even more ammunition and help toward our quarterback, Jake Browning. Now, here's the thing I will say in a positive note before you get the keys to victory. The positive note for Jake Browning. Number one, he got his first actual NFL start. Well, not even start. NFL, second time he's played an NFL game last week. Play week one versus the Browns, but it was at the very end when the game was already over. And then, obviously, he played last week. And with everything being said, he showed us one thing, that he does have a true connection with Trent Irwin. Makes sense because a lot of the year, Trent Irwin has, was a second team guy. And, of course, second team, Jake Browning. So both of them play a lot of the second team together, so it makes sense they had a connection. Also, Trent Irwin's been on this team for... You know, a couple years now. Same thing with, of course, Jake Browning. So they've formed that connection, right? So what we learned was he has a connection with Trenton Irwin. This will be his first career start in the NFL. Based on what the coaches say, they have faith in him. And they truly believe he is the best option. Kind of makes me think that that's not the truth. Because when Joe Burrow had a calf strain, we didn't go with Jake Browning. Instead, we went with Joe Burrow, who was injured, but we had more faith in him than Jake Browning. Nonetheless, though, Jake Browning has 12 straight days here to get on pace with not only the starting roster, with Jamar Chase, which he threw a touchdown last week at the end of the game, which was awesome. He also almost connected with Jamar Chase with a 60-yard pass down the field. Another really great play. He also gets more time to get on pace with players like you know, obviously Chuck Sizzle, if we ever use him on offense. Obviously, he's already on pace for Trent Irwin. If T does play, get more on pace with T. And all that kind of great stuff, right? So he has more time to kind of get in this system. The good thing is, for the most part, he's been here, right? He knows what he's doing. And this is more times to get reps with the first team starters. So they give us currently a 48.4% chance to win this game. And I think this is a very, very winnable game for us. Uh, I think Pittsburgh has a great defense. I think Pittsburgh's really biggest issue, obviously, is Kenny Pickett. And last week, if they would have used Naj, if they would have used Jalen Warren more, they would have won that game versus the um, Cleveland Browns. But instead, they went Najee Harris, and it kind of went downhill. Now, the best thing Pittsburgh can do here is play great defense. And, you know, just limit Kenny Pickett's mistakes in this game and just run the ball. And I think that's probably what their game plan is going to be, especially with the fact that we have a very weak run defense. So our keys to victory is going into this game. Number one, we have to shut down the run. We have to shut it down. Last week, that was actually no, not last week. Well, last week they did run the ball a little bit on us, not as effective. The real problem was the week before that. If we actually go back here and we go to um, Baltimore's, let's see Baltimore's game more fast. What did they have rushing wise on us? Obviously, once Joe went down with the injury, the whole entire game imploded on itself. Let's be honest. But I want to see real fast what did uh, they have rushing wise. So rushing wise for the game, um, rushing oh, 157 yards rushing. Yes, yeah, so they actually did have a pretty dang good rushing day. And if you go back to the week before that, that was the real big rushing day. And that, of course, came down to um, the Texans here, who had 188 yards on the ground. 
listen, we are not a good rushing defense. We have to shut down their run game. Because if they actually start utilizing Jalen Warren, I'm not really scared of Najee Harris. I'm not really scared of the guy. But Jalen Warren is an underrated, absolutely just sleeper, superstar player that I think eventually they're going to realize he's one of the he's going to be one of the best running backs in the league in the far future from now. Until they realize that he is that good, we'll see how long it takes for them to start utilizing him more. But I think if they use Najee Harris, we should be okay against the run. If they use Jalen Warren, we have to shut this down. We have to contain the run and make Kenny Pickett beat us. And that's when you really are going to start exposing the real problem of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's Matt Canada. Kenny Pickett and Matt Canada is the problems with this Steelers team. Their defense is great. They have Jalen Warren in the run game. He's amazing. And then again, the biggest problem is Kenny Pickett and Matt Canada. So if you can contain the run, and I know it's easier said than done. Didn't mean to rhyme there. But if you stack the box and you shut it down, you're going to shut down the Seals offense. Seals offense last week had 10 points. I know they played the Browns, who are a great defense. Don't get me wrong. But if you shut down this run game, the game is pretty much over. Like, you're going to shut down the Seals offense. Then it comes down to Jake Browning, obviously not turning the ball over. And that's going to go into second point here, second key to victory, which is, again, run the damn ball. I wouldn't say run the damn ball because I know they're going to run the damn ball. But I will say it like this, right? Get creative with your runs. Get creative. You know, I'll, I'll put this in a bigger point here. Get creative with your play calls. Listen, you don't have Joe Burrow back there this week, okay? You're not going to have him back there for the rest of the season. If you want to win these games, and trust me, the coaches do, us fans, some fans, some fans not, maybe so, they're going to be like, hey, listen, let's just tank. Let's just go for a better draft pick. But at the end of the day, coaches never want to tank. Because a coach with a bad record because they tank doesn't change. literally just causes the coach to be closer and closer to getting fired. That's all it does for the coach. For us fans, it might be better like for the long run. But for coaches and players, it's awful. Players get fired. Players get cut. Coaches get fired. So no one wants to tank on the organization. They're going to try to win every single game moving forward, right? Only times you could say people tank and it's actually positive to what coaches or players would be if you tank for like a franchise quarterback like Caleb Williams or something like that. But... Get creative with this, okay? You're not going to be able to sit back there and dot up the Steelers' defense with your quarterback, Jake Browning. I'm sorry, you're just not going to be able to. If T is able to play this game, if Yoshi's able to play this game, and we have our full receiving core out there, I still don't think you're going to be able to fully dot up the Steelers' core. I think Jake Browning's a little bit underrated, though. I've been talking about this all year, and I think Jake Browning might have a little bit of a sneaking legend in him. So... I think we'll be able to do some things, but you won't be able to dot them up. So take off the pressure off Jake Browning, right? Take the pressure off of the offense being, you know, limited without Joe Burrow. Throw trick plays in there. End arounds. Double end arounds. Tyler Boyd can throw a touchdown pass, right? Have Tyler Boyd throw a touchdown pass in this game. Have, you know, anybody else throw a touchdown pass. Like, it doesn't just have to be Jake Browning doing everything and really kind of taking over for that Joe Burrow role of being the Superman here. Get someone else involved, right? So that's what I think we need to do in this game is open up the playbook. You are now in a situation where, and I think this is always like the best thing to say, is whenever a team is like 2-13, and 13, right? They're always the scariest team to play. Let's say you're 11-2 and two and you're playing a game that's a team that's, uh, you know, 2-11, and 11, right? It's always scary to play that because they have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose going out there because if they lose, whatever. They're already having a bad season. If they win, awesome, right? They would love to beat you. So that's really what we have to play like. We have to be that team moving forward that teams don't want to play because they don't know what they're going to get. And that is how we're going to win these games. 
is running trick plays, running end arounds, running flea flickers, running plays where you throw the ball to the receiver, the receiver throws a 60 yards down the field. Get creative with this offense, okay? That's number two. We have to open up this playbook. And number three, best believe it here, we have to start this game off fast. And I know it's going to be easier said than done. Don't get me wrong. I understand. You got Jake Browning versus a very good Pittsburgh Steelers defense. A very good coach team, too. They have, again, Mike Tomlin, he knows how to win. Okay? With all their problems this year with the Steelers, with all of them being outscored, and just Matt Canada is an absolute trash, uh, trash can. I think Kenny Pickett, I don't think he's as bad as people say he is. But still, nonetheless, with all the limitations of Kenny Pickett, I think it's very clear that, you know, Mike Tomlin has overcome a lot of that. So we're going to have, we're not going to be able to outcoach Mike Tomlin. I don't think we will be in this game. We're not going to be able to outcoach him. So what we're going to have to do here is get a lead early and just kind of let our defense eat. Okay. And against this offense they have with Matt Canada, we should be able to eat against this offense. But we're going to have to put some points up. And again, if that is strict plays, end arounds, you know, one direction, coming back for another sequel, band opportunity, I don't know. Like, we have to put up points at any way possible. I don't care what you do. I don't care how ugly it is. I don't care if you run the ball for two play or three uh, yards every single play until you get a touchdown. You gotta just score. That's all you gotta do in this game. If your offense can put up 17 points... And even if that ends up being five field goals and two extra points in the first half, or sorry, uh, a safety in the first half, you have to do it. You just have to get up in this game, get the momentum, let your defense be able to eat. And I, again, like I said, keys to victory here. I'm not even going to say run the damn ball because we're going to run the damn ball in this game. I guarantee you right now, the game plan is 90%, give it to Joe Mixon. The rest of it's going to be, okay, let's see what could happen with, you know, Jake Browning throwing the football. But that's kind of how I look at it going into this game. It's not going to be an easy game. By no stretch of imagination am I going to say this is going to be an easy game. It's not going to be. But I think it's a game we can win. It's a game we can win. And it's a game that would really help us out when it comes to long term at the end of this year and the potential of making the playoffs. So tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.